Welcome, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Um, much appreciated that I can see a lot of people here today. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining my stream. I thought this is a bit of a special stream. You know, I've been playing around a lot with AI and I've been playing around a lot with Wonder Studio. Uh, and this, this happened kind of by pure chance, you know, the BBC uh, invited me over to do an interview for the BBC Click um, a TV show about AI, and I kind of like started playing around with AI more and more and more, and I, I, I need to show you. <laughs> I need to show you how it works, and I need to show you how I kind of feel that we are going to be fine. <laughs> You're going to see in a minute why I'm saying that. The whole thing today that I want to talk about is about this thing, like Wonder Studio. And I, I wanted to talk about Wonder Studio because, you know, the whole range, the whole rage is AI, right? Like AI is going to replace this and it's going to replace that. It's going to replace this and going to like completely change the visual effects landscape. And, and in a way, it will change the landscape. And in fact, it's already changed the landscape. But I wanted to have a chat with all of you because I, I kind of feel that not a lot of people really um, test these applications properly. You know, I feel like Wonder Studio is is a good product, but it's really has a lot of flaws. And I and I never get to see the flaws. I never get to see what doesn't work. And I today I wanted to show you what doesn't work. And and also I want to bring it to Nuke and gonna open Blender to show you how that works as well. And and what is this all about? But before we even start with that. For those of you who don't know what Wonder Studio is, like I'm gonna just like um, show you really quickly. The reason I was so interested about this was because they do a lot of claims, and and Wonder Studio does these kind of claims, as you can probably see on the screen. I'm having it on the screen here for you to see. It says, and I quote, an AI tool that automatically animates, lights, composites CG character into a live action scene, and in a way. It's true. It does that. It it actually does that. And and you've probably seen on Twitter and you've probably seen on TikTok and on social media all these posts of amazing composites made by this tool. Uh, what they don't show is also all the miscomps and all the problems that this tool also has. And that's why I wanted to kind of like talk to you and and also in a way, try to have an honest conversation about AI tools and have an honest conversation about where they are going. You know, I think that's what I think lacks on the industry in general. We don't really talk about these things properly. There's always hype, 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 and we never get to like go under the hype. And, and for me, a lot of these tools are just hype. Uh, as you go down here, it starts to say, welcome to your visual effects studio in your browser. That's all cool as well. Quite happy. I would I, I would love for this to be true. You know, you can be on a browser, you drag and drop things and it's done. As you go in here, you keep like dragging down and it kind of starts saying, that's when it's I started to become interested on this in this application because that's when, you know, I read no more mocap, no complicated 3D software, no expensive production hardware. All the artist needs is a camera. So this, when, when you started to hearing this statement, I started to think, oh, wow, okay, it's, this is some bold statement here. It's like, for me, like, I started really be interested because is it really true? Like, like is it really working? Is it, is it really like what it says on the tin? Because... These are some bold statements, okay? Like, you know, you guys know me. I'm a visual effects artist, a supervisor. I've been working in the industry for 20 years. And for me, these are some really big claims, you know. No need to work shot by shot. That's another big statement here. No need for heavy frame by frame VFX work because it's so horrible to do frame by frame. The system automatically detects the actor's performance based on a single camera footage. Then it takes that performance and transfers into the CG character of your choice, automatically animating it, litting it, and compositing it. Wow, oh my god, this is amazing. And as you scroll down, it adapts to your existing pipeline. It works with Unreal, it works with, uh, with uh, Blender, it works with Maya. Exports individual in elements. You can have the mocap capture, you can have the, the character capture, you can have the alpha, like the character by itself, you can have the alpha channel by itself, you can have the clean plate as it, uh, by itself, the camera track by itself as well, the Blender file, 
and the final render. Oh my God, that means I can then go in to another application and finish the work and make all these adjustments, right? It kind of makes like a bit of a joke, you know, so easy as an alien could do it. And again, another one of those statements. Say goodbye to complicated 3D software and the time-consuming learning curve. So at this stage, I'm kind of thinking to myself, oh, well, okay, they are really going for it. You know, like like they're, they're kind of, uh, you know, putting it all out, saying that CG is too complicated, VFX is too complicated, it's too difficult, it should be much easier. And I, I completely agree with them. It should be easy. It should be simple. And I, I hope that we live in the future that all these things can work and all these things can actually operate exactly like they say. And and I hope that someday it will be like that. And I, and I, I hope that it will be a lot easier so we can focus on the creativity. Now that I've introduced a bit of the tool and subscribing to it, you have access to the tool, as you can see on the screen here. That's how the tool looks. Like you have a bunch of examples that of course work perfectly. They're like already aligned, they're always working. And as you can see on the bottom here, I have some of my own projects that I've done myself because I wanted to give it a go with production footage and that's what I did. Here's what you get. Basically by paying a hundred pounds, a hundred dollars, you get this. You basically have 80 gigs, which is not a lot if you think about it. And then you basically get 600 seconds. You can do 600 seconds of footage. That means you can protect 600 seconds. And the the whole thing, you know, I so far, as you can see, I've done about 200 seconds of footage so far. And then you have 15 out of 15, you can basically upload your own character. So if you don't like the characters they have, you can just upload whatever you want. And that's it, really. And from there, the subscription that I've chosen uh, gives you this. You can do 4K. Um, you can um, have an upload maximum of two, meh, of 2 gigs. You can have 15 custom character uploads. You can have four people uh, motion captured. You can export the, mo the mocap data. You can do a commercial license if you want to. You can have the Blender, the clean plate, the Blender file, the alpha channel, the PNG, which I love. We're so 90s here having a PNG. And then a live action advanced as well. You can go into having a lot more details um, of it as well. These are some of the shots that I'm using, okay? Just so you know. This is the footage that I've decided to use for this project. So the, the clips I'm about to show you, these are clips from a short film, 2017 with some of my students. I've never finished the short film. I probably will do one day, but I thought they would be perfect. They were shot on a Blackmagic uh, camera. And they are actually, uh, you know, they are actually 6K. That's how we shot it at the time. And these are just raw shots. They are the raw shots that we've shot at the time. And they are just like regular production shots. They are with nice depth of field. They, they are raw. You know, they have a lot of detail. They're pretty sharp. So I've loaded up this shot here. Um, I've loaded up also this one here. I'm just going to like uh, show you. So this is another one. So this is a shot where we have the main actress. She's on a table and then there's a bunch of people uh, asking for autographs. You know, that's also like a simple enough shot. And then also we have this shot here, which I loaded to the system. This is for me to test a static shot, like where we don't have camera moves. So this on this shot, like there's no camera moves at all uh, whatsoever. And then the last one, last but not least, was the hospital. This was another shot, which was relatively simple. We have a few people walking around on the scene, and the main actress is walking. And then, of course, we have like this really nice, I think it was an 85 mil that we shot, and we kept focus on her. And then, and basically, I picked up these four shots. So the first thing I did was I loaded up the ProRes's, and uh, hole and behold, the, the um, uh, Wonder Studio doesn't like ProRes. <laughs> So I couldn't load the ProRes. I couldn't load a ProRes. I had to load um, an H.264 video. So the way this works is you basically uh, run a new project. That's what we did. And then you have a choice. Um, you can either do easy live action, which is like all automated, not much to do, like it just does it by itself. And then you have advance. Advance allows you to do a few tweaks, okay? And, and also it allows you to get more exports and more stuff. And so basically, um, I decided to do both. I, I tried live action easy first. I just did that. And then I also tried um, live action advance and did that as well. Live action advance, I did continue. Uh, and then once you're here, it opens up the interface. Uh, basically, on this side, you have the all the characters that they provide to you. 
From there, you can upload your videos. And so I don't need to upload because I've uploaded them already. So I'm going to go to my assets uh, in here. And as you can see, I have all the clips here. I have the cinema, the books, uh, the corridor. These, by the way, were uploaded directly to their server. So I, there's already a bit of an issue here because I have to kind of like upload to their server. So if you're working with an ND8 project, you're already screwed. You drag in the footage and you can even drag multiple takes. That's the cool thing about it. You can even like process multiple things. Let's choose a frame where she's like standing up here. Basically have three options, edit, actor, render. That's it. So I'm going to press next. I'm going to press next. And then it's going to ask me, okay, what, there's a few settings here. What focal does it have? Like, for example, I can tell him how much it has. So I know for a fact this was shot with a 50 millimeter because I was on set. I was directing it. So this was uh, filmed with a 15 millimeter. Uh, so I'm going to put 15. Maybe it helps. I don't know. It says keep audio. There's no audio. There's no point of doing that. Keep letterbox. There's no letterbox. So it doesn't even matter. So these options are basically that's it. And then you have auto per cut off. That's that's also not relevant at this stage because I'm not doing any more takes. There's only one take. So, so it doesn't really matter, uh, to be honest. From there, basically, I'm going to press scan frame fractures. So I press there. It scans the frames. It takes couple of minutes. Sometimes it takes very little time. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Okay, so now it detected that there's a person here. If you feel that it doesn't detect correctly, you can do it on several frames. And so it keeps track of that person throughout the frames. Uh, so for example, if you go here and you detect again, you can delete, you can have the same person, for example. But it, it, it's not relevant at, the, at this time because it's only one person. There's no more than one person, just one person here. So I'm going to now drag and let's just drag the dummy robot. I drag it in. So now I'm telling him, okay, the, the, the robot is going to replace, the, the girl is, uh, uh, is going to be replaced by the robot. I can then choose some things. I can tell him to do feet IQ, IQ uh, wrists IQ. So basically, I've read all of this. I went through the help file. They're very, the help file is very, very good. And, I, and in fact, the help file, the funny thing about this is that it, uh, it really like goes through in detail on what shouldn't work and what doesn't work. It says, you know, like, uh, try not to have too long hair on the, on the person. Try to not have, uh, like, really long clothing. Uh, try to uh, have a stable camera. Basically, everything we don't usually have on a shot. <laughs> so it's, um, it's, it's, it's interesting how, how it's, like, already uh, giving you, like, an expectation of failure already when you read the help file. Basically, from here, um, I can do. F uh, I've I've tried this many times. It kind of gives me a better result with all of it on. Uh, it also pelvis offset. I left it to feet. I've done multiple versions. Shot type. Uh, I mean, this is what they consider a wide. Although it's not a wide, it's a mid. But you know, it's it's a it, what, that's what they consider wide. I'm gonna leave it in auto. Motion type slow. I'm gonna leave it auto as well. You can tell them that it's slow, medium, and fast. And then estimate the hands, feet lowering, feet contact. So basically, when you press those buttons, you basically are telling him that you want it to be as accurate as possible to uh, hit the, flea, the feet. So now from here, I'm going to press next. And then it gives you the option of what you want to do with this. So this is the, the, the good thing, right? Like from here, I'm going to tell him, okay, let's say I want 4K because why not? Um, let's say that I want... PNG because who doesn't like PNGs? I'm being ironic, by the way. So you press PNG and you basically get a PNG sequence, or you can do an MP4 and just get MP4s out of it, the whole thing. ProRes, I guess, someday will come. It says soon. And then you basically can get the mocap, you can get the clean plate, you can get the alpha channels. These are the alpha channels of the character that is Rotwing. The blender scene, which is really interesting. The track and the camera pass is not here yet. So I guess it will come later. Uh, it's a beta. This is beta, by the way. The word beta is everywhere, okay? And so if you... I already have processed this. I already sh I already have renders of this, but this is usually usually it takes between an hour to three hours. Okay, so if I put 4K, it's probably gonna take two hours, and it's probably gonna be. So I'm gonna say start processing, and then it starts processing, and so now um, it basically says 154 minutes. And once you are there, once you get this, you know they're they're now processing on the cloud. You can switch off your computer. You can 
close the you can close this thing you don't even need to be here watching it um can go about your business and then you get a link and basically you get this so i'm going to show you the ones i processed so the first first one i processed quarter one that was the first first one i did so you see from here i can download the mocap the clean plate the alpha channel and then the blender scene and all the export scenes so that's what i downloaded so i've downloaded all of it already and this is the result that i got from the system. So once I've once I've downloaded it, this was what I got. I didn't tamper with this. I didn't do anything. I just like exported it, brought it into my computer and play it. And so this is what I got. I got this. Basically, the character is floating in the air. There's all sorts of issues where it's not really dragging to the floor. His feet go through the floor. It doesn't really detect the floor at all. So there's all sorts of problems. And so at, at this stage, I'm kind of thinking, oh, wow, okay. So basically the clean plate is not working. As you can see, you can still see the hair of the, of the actress. It's floating in the air. It's coming out of the screen. The shading and lighting sucks. It doesn't really work. The legs are going through it. And in fact, it's not even tracked. You know, the camera is moving and it's not even moving. And in fact, I, 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 I went went into Blender and the camera is static. It doesn't even move. It's not even tracked. So I don't even know what the hell is going on, but I'll show you, uh, I'll show you in a minute. So this was result number one, okay? And so I thought, man, I, I must be doing something wrong, right? Like I thought like, man, I, I must be doing something wrong because you see, I don't want to slag this software too much. I, I want to keep it real. I want, I, you know, I want you all to understand that I kind of feel that this is awesome. If you think about it, man, this is amazing, right? Like I just, loaded a clip into a browser and it automatically did all of this it's quite impressive if you think about it it's impressive that it even did anything it's impressive that it automatically almost removed the whole thing automatically almost got the track to work it automatically did all of that even the lighting direction is kind of there so you know maybe for a social media post or maybe for a TikTok video or maybe for a YouTube short, I'm sure this is going to be fine. And especially my first thing is, is like the understanding that this could change forever previs. This is amazing for someone to get a green light on a project. You know, you can go into this software, do all these shots really quickly, build up a short film that goes with your uh, script and then maybe you can get greenlit because it's 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 really impressive you know it's like good enough for a previs yes it is good enough for a previs but that's not what they wrote here is it like when you go in here and read it it keeps telling me no more mocap no complicated 3d software no more expensive production hardware all the artist needs is a camera so yeah, this is not working, right? Like, I mean, that's not true. I, I, it's a shame because I feel that this software is absolutely mind blowing for previs, for testing. And you do get the files, so you can do something with it. We'll get into that in a minute because I'm assuming that this is gonna be amazing in five years, 10 years, but let's go back to the results. Let me now show you the clean plate. So this is the alpha channel that it produced. So this is the automated roto of the girl and it's quite impressive if you think about it this was done automatically by the the system it's not good of course the hair is not working but it's a great first step for sure and again like i said it is actually quite impressive to even see something uh working you know like this now if i go back and show you the clean plate the clean plate is where I think things really got really wrong. The whole thing with the clean plate is that it should actually be better because there is a lot of information on this room. And so I think the clean plate is definitely looking like a predator vision thing going on here. So it's definitely not working as a clean plate. But again, it's not bad, right? I mean, it's kind of working. <laughs> but keep in mind that you're going to get a, a PNG out of it. So it's like, eh, it looks fine, but... But then you kind of st start to think, how do I finish this? And, and in a way, you kind of start to think, well, it's probably going to be more work to finish it than actually doing it from scratch. That's where we are right now. And I feel that a lot of the AI tools are a bit like that. The AI tools are kind of there, but not. And they will probably eventually be there. But I think uh, right now, people have to be very, very 
com like they have to really understand the expectation of what this is and what it can do for you because and so be aware of that and that's why i wanted to do this stream because i i only see good press on this software and i and i i'm not even shitting on it i'm just like trying to be constructive about this and i feel like there is something here but I, I feel that it would be, it's a bit disingenuous to try to pretend that this is working. And especially for me personally, it's very disingenuous to tell me that there is no more complicated 3D software and expensive production hardware. And the only thing you need is a camera. If you look at other AI tools, if you look at, for example, the content aware tool on Photoshop, I actually think it's a very powerful tool. And in fact, it's amazing for cleanup. It's amazing for projections. It's amazing for matte painting. And that one actually works. <laughs> and also the same way the Foundry has uh, Copycat, you know, and also the uh, wonderful Cattery, which has a lot of Copycat nodes that you can download. So there is AI and machine learning that is actually working right now. Like, let me, let me show you other examples. So, because um, I'm going to, after I showed you the other examples, I wanted to also show you the raw files, and that's the whole point of this stream, is to kind of show you what you can do with this and, and how do you take it further. Let me go back and do the advanced settings, and I did. I went to the advanced settings, and I did the advanced corridor two. And so this was the result of the advanced corridor two, uh, me thinking, oh, this is gonna be much better because it's the advanced version, right? So I did the advanced version to see if it would give me a better result. And this is the result I got. The character is still sliding. It's still not tracked to the floor. It's still kind of dragging itself into the floor. It still goes through the floor, not understanding that that's a floor at all. And it still shakes, not moving with the camera. So even with the advanced settings, I still got pretty much the same result. I got a pretty bad result. It doesn't really work. It slides. The lighting is not really perfect. The cleanup is not perfect. So again, it's a great start. But is it really a great start? That's, the, that's my question to all of you. And that's the question to the community in general. Because the AI thing, oh my God, AI is going to replace this. AI is going to... Like, even today, I got a student of mine like messaging me. Oh, Hugo, is it worth me learning compositing? Because AI is going to replace the whole thing. And yes, you are right, student. <laughs> I'm not going to say his name. But yeah, AI will replace compositing. But it will replace compositing on other aspects. I think really, in my view... It's more about machine learning. It's more about copycat. It's more about tools that will help you to achieve better. So give you an example where you can get a clean plate really quickly or you can get a rotoscope really quickly, but then you still have to kind of like give it some input because as you probably noticed, you know, it's not understanding where the floor is. So I even thought about this, like how to fix this if I was the Wonder Studio people. I actually think it's quite easy. If you had two cameras, if you had a, a witness camera and the real camera, you could sort this out because you can triangulate the track. And so by just having a witness camera, you could automatically probably get this to work right away. And then the other thing as well, if you could feed it an HDR that you've done on set, even better. If you can feed it a clean plate, even better. So I can see a future where a software like this could work really well, but it just has to have more options. And it can't be PNG. It has to be XR. It has to be ACES. It has to be 16-bit. It has to be all those things that we know that the visual effects industry works. And we already see examples of that in the industry. We see Avatar 2 has a bunch of machine learning tools. Avatar 2 used a lot of AI to do the deep estimation of the camera. There's articles about that. In fact, if you, if you check out the before and afters magazine, I'm not I'm not getting any money from it, but if you check some of the magazines from Ian, there's a lot of articles, and especially this one and this one, a lot of articles about AI and a lot of articles about how Veta is using AI and how ILM is using AI and how Veta is using machine learning. Go and research that because it is actually happening, and but it's a lot better than what you're seeing here. Anyway, getting back to this thing. So after this, I kind of thought, okay, Let's uh, see what else it can do. So I thought, oh, maybe the problem is the corridor, right? I thought, like, maybe the problem is me. Maybe I'm giving him a really hard shot. So let's give him an easy shot. Then I'm going to give him a shot that no one is moving. There's no camera moving. There's just two people talking. 
Okay, so this, this should work, right? Like this should be simple. This should be the easiest thing in the world. And I'm gonna show you what the result was. So the result was this, I got this. So first of all, the clean plate is not working because somehow it's like going bananas behind the robot. The other thing as well is this geometry is all colliding all, all over the place. The hands go through the hands, the legs go through the legs. It just goes berserk. The reflections are wrong. The depth of field is wrong. It's just the whole thing is like not working, okay? Here's the toughest part, which is the crossing of the legs, okay? So at some moment, at some point here, Fiona, which is the main actress of this film, she crosses her legs and, you know, and it looks fine. I mean, on the video, it's, it's, she crosses like any person crosses the legs. She crosses one and then crosses the other leg. Okay. This is really simple stuff. And then she crosses the other leg. None of the legs go through each other. And now let me show you what the software thought of a crossing of a leg. So this is what the software thought that crossing the legs would be. This is what it did. The leg goes through the other leg in the arm and then goes through the whole thing and it actually crosses through the other leg and it stays inside the other leg. So not even the collision is working on this software. I don't doubt that they are trying very hard and I'm assuming that this in four years, this conversation is gonna be muted. This conversation is gonna be ridiculous because they're gonna look back in four years from now and they're gonna tell Hugo, it works fine now. And yes, I am happy that if it does, and I hope that it works someday. We are not there yet. And as you can see, this result would not pass a review. So yes, it could be very funny for TikTok. It could be very funny for YouTube, but then make sure that's your market and don't make claims that this is gonna replace this and replace that. Anyway. My rant is over and I'm going to continue, okay? So, okay, then I thought, oh, man, shit, this didn't work either. Okay, didn't work, so I thought, that's probably my problem, right? Because, so I loaded up more shots. I, I kind of looked, okay, I'm going to load up this shot I did um, as well for the film. So this is a simple shot of a, a few people on a row, and they're asking for an autograph to Fiona, okay? So that's the shot. Basically, the camera moves in. You see the them, she's like doing the autograph and basically some people come in and that's it. A really simple shot. It should be working, right? Again, I went over, did the whole thing and this is the result I got. First of all, her hands, I, I don't even know what the hands are doing. I, I don't even know what that is. The hands are not like the, the feet go through the feet. The hands go through the hands. The table is not like, in the front, it's on the back, the clean plate is berserk, the people on the line, they just kind of disappear, and then they come back, and then they are back, and then they're not there, and then they are there again. The whole thing is just like an absolute disaster. And so when I fought this, I, I man, there are some funny moments here, okay? So look, just look at the legs of this dude. Look at the legs at some point. He's like bending the legs. Look, look, he's like bending the legs into a way that would break his legs. Look at this dude. This dude disappears. Like at some point, he's just like, whoop, disappears. I looked at it and I thought, oh man, I, I didn't give up, man. I didn't give up. I thought, must be something wrong with me. Okay, I'm going to give it another go. Okay, I went in. <laughs> I went in, went all full in. And I thought, I'm going to try something else. Okay, I'm going to give it a yet another shot. Okay, this shot, you have one person walking again. Fiona is walking. Then you have some people in the background. The people in the background are defocused. You have clearly a definition of line there. The defocus should work for you to separate the main character from the background. It should work fine. Okay, let's see if that worked. So that's the raw plate that I've loaded up. This is the last one, by the way, because I gave up at some point. I thought, no, man, I'm not going to continue loading shots to this. Why? It doesn't work. So the result I got was this. Okay, are you ready? Because this is the worst one of all of them. Okay, so I'm going to like, robot is there, and then suddenly the other guy shows up, and then at some point they're all dragging, and then the other guy just goes away, and then comes back to another character. So, and then she appears again. I, I don't even know like how to start. And again, man, I don't want to slag this, I hope Wonder Studio does a huge success. I hope they really make it. I hope so. And I make they can solve this because I would have loved 
to do this, to drag and drop and it's done. I would love to do visual effects by dragging and drop. I, I hope that's someday a possibility. The same way, the same way that today we photograph on digital and we get the photo right away. That is a revolutionized. I am old enough to remember taking photos with a 35 mil, okay? I'm old enough to having to go and print the photos first. I am old enough to see how revolutionized it was having a digital camera. And so I know exactly how advancements in the world of, of tech and visual effects can really, really make your life better. The same way that we had huge advancements in motion control. We had huge advancements on digital photography. We had huge advancements by having Photoshop. Photoshop had layers on version two. We had huge advancements by having softwares like Nuke, democratizing everything. Now, the whole thing with this is that this is not working. You cannot do these statements and pretend that it's working. The funny thing is that when you go into the homepage, you get statements like this, these bullshit statements. But then as you go through, through the help file, it actually is a quite truthful uh, overhaul view of this software and all the limitations are actually written on the help file. And in fact, in fact, on this month's, like on last month's uh, before and afters from Ian Files, there's an interview with the creators of Wonder Studio. And the funny thing is that they are so transparent about how this doesn't work sometimes. They are so transparent. And I'm, 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 forgive me for the rant, but if you're listening, you are so transparent about it on your magazine, on interviews, and um, so transparent on help files but you're not being transparent on the homepage. And this is not going to help. This, this kind of stuff, pretending that VFX is easy, is definitely not gonna help our cause, and it's definitely gonna drive more people to hate CGI. And this is another problem this is also creating. So, rent is over now. Um, you, you know me, like, you know me, I don't usually complain, I don't. Like, you probably know that I don't usually complain on this uh, on this uh, channel but i just this gets me really riled up the reason why it gets me riled up riled up is mainly because i, I sometimes feel that it's a little bit ingenuous and then it doesn't help with all the problems we're having with the hate of cgi and people complaining about cgi being bad and all those articles from from the guardian and Oh my God, it just never ends, right? Like it just never ends that the Mission Impossible was all done by practical and that not credit. The whole thing is just lies on top of lies and on top of lies. And I just, uh, I just get a bit upset. And I noticed I was scrolling through the, through the comments on the chat and I saw that someone was saying that Corridor Digital got much better results. Hey, may, maybe it's my fault. Hey, maybe it's my fault, but it's supposed to be a one click system right it's supposed for me to load the thing and it should work and that's it like that's what i did i actually loaded five shots to it five shots anyway let's uh, now uh move our attention to the files themselves okay exactly what i got from them okay so what did i get uh let's go to the corridor which is the one i i wanted to show you real quick so this one here i got the clean plate which was a jpeg sequence Thank you so much. And then I got like uh, uh, some quick times. I also got like an FBX uh, for the main character. I got the Blender file. We'll get to that in a minute. The XRs, I'll show you what it is. That's me rendering. I've rendered the shot myself. I got like some PNG masks. These are the alpha channels as a PNG. We all love a PNG, don't we? And so I also got like the Blender file. I also got like the actual texture link, so you can, uh, which is quite nice. You can go to this website um, and you then get access to all the, the textures of these characters, which is really nice. Um, and so, as I was saying, that you can download the textures and all the files. Okay, so let's go back to the files that we were talking about. And then we got, of course, the output sequence, which is also PNG. We get this wonderful PNG uh, of the render. And then we have the textures. And the textures, you know, these are the textures I'm talking about. We have the UV textures of the character that we've used on this uh, film. So we get we get all the assets and we can use it, which is nice. And we get the UV thing. And 
I'm I'm assuming this is all kind of like ready. It's all commercial use. You can use it on commercial as well. So I got this Blender file and I thought, because you, you notice, remember when I was showing you this, remember that the character pass is not available here. See here? Character pass soon. So this is when you're going to get just the character, just the render, the the multi-pass EXR, I'm assuming, or I don't think it's going to be an EXR. I think it's going to be a multi-pass PNG. So you probably get, like, the multi-pass PNG, I guess. I don't know. Um, so uh, you get the multi-pass PNG. Uh, not yet. So I figured, okay, I want to have... I need to do some work, right? I p Because I'm putting in the work, okay? Just so you don't have to. So I went in into the Blender file, and I'm going to show you what the Blender file is. So I got in here. I'm just going to open it in Blender. Um, forgive me, I'm not very good at Blender. So this is what I got. Um, I got, like, basically the character. The character is here. Funny enough, as you can see, the, the camera is on the horizon, and the camera is not moving. The character is moving. So not even entirely sure what the hell this is, because this is not even scaled. It's not even properly done. It's actually on the floor, so the, the, the camera should be moving. It should be a moving camera. So as you can see, he's walking, 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 and then he goes to the floor, and he drags through the floor, and the camera never moves, look. I went into the process, not knowing Blender, okay? Went to the process of uh, learning and going to the rendering tab here, activated 4K, activated a bunch of things, including passes. I've outputted a Z-Depth, I outputted a position pass, a normal UV, an object ID, direct, indirect, color, direct, indirect, like all of them, transmission, volume, others. I did the whole thing. Basically, just like output it everything I could, okay? And the result was this. Like, I, I, if I render, I'm just going to render, I already rendered this. It took about, on my dual GPU, I have a dual GPU on cycles. I, it took me like an hour to render the whole thing. This is what I've rendered. So I'm going to just show you a still, one still, so you can see. So that's the render I got. Uh, it should be done in a, in a second. Uh, just give it a second. There you go. Now it's rendered. Okay, so that's what I got. This is the final frame. And so I rendered this entire thing with all the passes, okay? So after I did that, and remember I told you that there was missing files, and there was, like, there were some kind of missing files on the character, and I can't find them. I don't know where. I haven't contacted support of Wonder Studio, of course, but, you know, maybe I will. Um, went to Nuke, um, and so in Nuke I've outputted, I have everything here. So I have the PNG. This is the PNG I got for the Roto, which is useless. I mean, oh, by the way, the frames start at zero. Um, that's also funny. And also the naming convention is zero. Like, it doesn't have naming. It's just, like, called zero. That's it. Like, the all the files that it outputted are basically zero, 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 zero. There's not even a naming convention. Not only it's not EXR, it doesn't have a naming convention. I don't, I, I don't know, man. This is... Uh, this is so... Uh, never mind. Then I got, like, the comp of them. That's the comp they've made. And then I got, like, the clean plate. So the clean plate... Uh, just really look at it. Like, I mean, come on. Like, it's... Uh, I mean, it's the Predator, right? Like, now that I can really zoom into it inside of Nuke, not only it's a PNG, but it's, like, not really... In fact, I would have to do this entire thing again. Like, there's no way I'm gonna get away with this. Uh, because this wouldn't work in production. Now, I did brought the, the render. So this is the render from Blender. And I got a bunch of passes, you know, cryptomats, you know, basically got the composite. Then I got, like, the Amity Clusion. I got, like, the, the combined cryptomats, a bunch of them. Really cool. I can change a lot of things and do a lot of things. And so, so this is all cool, right? Like, it's all cool because now I can render it myself and I can have a depth pass. I can do some depth of field. I, I have, like, the diffuse color. You know, I have, like, the diffuse, uh, the diffuse, uh, the diffuse direct. You know, I have, like, the indirect. You know, I have the emission. I have the whole thing, the environment as well, even the reflections, the glossy pass. So it's all here. And remember, this is this is where it's, this is where you need to think. This is quite impressive, okay? This was all done automatically. Didn't do shit, okay? This was done by the system. The system created this Blender file. Obviously, this this uh, we could animate this. There's a rig here, so we could animate it again. We could tweak it. We could do all sorts of things. You know, we could kind of like. I, forgive me, I don't know how to do the animation in Blender, but anyway, you can definitely do something with it. You can kind of like, you know. 
animate it again. And I guess that's where I'm having a bit of a gripe with the software because, okay, I have to do it all again. <laughs> okay, so I have I have to do my homework. I guess that's where I am, isn't it? Anyway, going back to Nuke, I, I then have all my passes and everything. And first thing out of the bat, the first thing I notice is that remember those missing files? There was a reason for it because if you look at the result of my comp and the result of their comp, so that's their comp, okay? So their comp has some kind of light that is missing. I don't know what happened. I've went through the Blender file multiple times, can't find the thing. I've even asked for help for someone that knows Blender. They couldn't find it either. So there's some kind of missing light here. I have no idea what the hell happened there. It, it, the fact is that he's much darker than he should be. So I'm not entirely sure. But I guess, you know, maybe, yeah, you're probably right. Maybe the HDR is missing. That's the thing. I could not find it. <laughs> could not find the HDR. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming the HDR is created by the actual plate I gave it. So I'm assuming the 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 AI created a, a fake HDR, but then the HDR is not there and the GI is on on Blender. I, I don't know. Like I, At this point, my point is that what the hell am I going to even do with this? Yes, I can go in Nuke and I can tweak all these AOVs and I can do all of it and do the whole thing I want, but I can't really do anything, can I? Because... It needs to be re-rigged, it needs to be reanimated, it needs to be retracked, it needs to be reshaded, it needs to be relid. So the whole thing is just a previs. And I'm happy that it's a previs, that's fine. I have no quorums, I have no problems of it being a previs. I have no problems whatsoever of it looking like a previs. But then advertise that your software does previses. That's the thing, you know? That's the problem. So, you know, anyway, my rant is over. I don't, I don't want to spend the whole day just ranting about this. This stream is already uh, long. I just wanted to show you this because we've all heard the hype. AI, 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 AI is going to replace VFX. AI is going to replace compositing. AI is going to replace everything. I actually personally think that it's going to not replace. I think it's going to bring us a lot of really nice tools like the fill the generative fill from After Effect, from Adobe, the copycat from Nuke, and also all the machine learning tools from DaVinci. I actually think that we're going to reach a point where we can drag and, drop th drag and drop things, but it needs to be done properly. We need to have proper ACES car pipeline. We need to have proper HDRs. We need to have proper EXRs. We need to have proper quality. We need to be able to process more than 4K. We need to do this locally on our machine because I there's no way we're going to upload footage into their server. All of these things need to be achieved for this to work. And now, having said that, I think Wonder Studio is amazing if you are just doing TikTok, if you're doing Instagram, if you're doing YouTube, and if you want to do previs, if you want to try some stuff, if you want to test some stuff, or even, even cooler is that I feel that this could be a great, great first step into VFX. So someone young can go into Wonder Studio, export all this stuff, go to Blender, and then play around with all these files. So it's almost like it's a great entry level for VFX. That's kind of where I am. That's where I think we are with a tool like this. And so, does it really do what it says on the website? No, it does not. Does it replace all the mocap and all the VFX artists? No, it does not. Does it work? No. Will it work? Maybe. We don't know. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know the roadmap of what they're doing. Is it even going to be a roadmap? Is it going to disappear in a year from now? There's so many problems that I don't even know where to begin. And so I leave you with this because I, I feel like we have so much noise and so much hype about these AI softwares. And I feel that sometimes we forget to have a constructive and serious conversation of where it's going. It's impressive that it even generated something. I think it's impressive that it even done what we see on the screen here. Did it replace and manage to make the shot? No, it did not. So I actually showed you six, five shots that I tried. None of them worked. So either it's me that is having a problem. Maybe my shots are too compli complicated. After using it in five different shots, five completely different shots, 
and it didn't work. So I feel like they should go back and rethink their pr approach. And they should maybe introduce a method of putting a witness camera, a method of actually tweaking things, because we all been with clients. There is no way we're going to be able to do these things without being able to change them. Clients come back with feedback. Clients come back with notes. If we can't change it or tweak it, what the hell are we going to do with the shot? We're going to be stuck with the shot. It needs to work on a proper pipeline. So anyway, I'm not going to rant anymore about this. I'm hoping that this software develops to an amazing potential and because it does have a huge potential and all of the AI tools that I've seen so far have a huge potential. Anyway, this is, a, this is it for me. Bye. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much for being here.